Hi, welcome to another case here. This is probably an annoying um, thing to happen to any uh, dentist. Probably more annoying because um, I sort of, my uh, my practice is mainly endodontics and, and in causing a perforation isn't one of my, um, you know, finest moments. But I think this is a really, really good case of how to kind of get yourself out of a bit of a sticky situation and um you know i do hundreds of root canals every year and um you know i i i can put my hand on my heart you know i i i do perforate teeth and you know you could argue it is um you know it's 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 not the greatest thing to do but i, I suppose another argument is to say if if you have never perforated the tooth then you've never really done enough root canals. So anyway, let's look at the x-ray here. Um, and at first glance, this is uh, an x-ray of an upper left five, okay? Um, there's, a, there's a myriad of things going on here. The, the six is out. Um, I actually uh, uh, completed the root canal on the upper left seven, even though it looks awful. And then there's a little bit of a question mark over the upper left three, but today we wanna concentrate on the, on the five. And then we look at the x-ray, um, not, Taken in hindsight into consideration, you'd think that this was a single-rooted tooth. And in fact, um, if you uh, what once we have a look at the, the post op here, you can see that it's obviously a, a, a double-rooted tooth, and and one of the roots sort of swings quite uh, significantly to the distal aspect. But at this case, at this point here, I have uh, looked at the tooth, and I, st and I still think you know it's it's a it's a single rooter. The, the canals are highly, highly calcified as well. So that is probably one of the main risks uh, or one of the main contributing factors, should I say, to causing a perforation is that highly calcified canals because essentially, um, you know, the, the, the most difficult thing is looking for the entrance of the canals. You know, once you've found the canal, perforation the risk of perforation goes down significantly so um, you'll notice that me searching for this uh, for this extra canal it causes me to perforate the tooth and then I subsequently take a CBCT and we'll talk about that in, in depth in later so let's get on with the case here essentially what I'm doing is I'm just um, creating the initial access this tooth had been accessed by me previously and essentially what I've done is I've just got inside the tooth I have um, dressed it with some PTFE and then a little bit of calcium hydroxide. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to investigate the tooth with a size 10K file. And I suppose if we look at the, the sort of orientation of the K file here, it does look like it's not going down the center of the tooth. And that is a, um, a, a sort of a, an indication that maybe this tooth has got two canals. So I'm gonna pick up an orifice opener because the size 10K file isn't getting anywhere near to length that we'd like to. And when we open up the orifice, sometimes that can help the uh, the negotiating, negotiating file to get to length. And um, as we can see here, the orifice is now quite significantly open and we're gonna fill the orifice with lots and lots of irrigants. And then we're using a, a D finder here just to negotiate down to the uh, the zero reading on the apex locator we managed to get that quite easily and then essentially we're just gonna uh, uh, f uh, shape the tooth with our uh, with our final protocol we're gonna use a size 15 high flex file and then we're gonna use a size 10 just to recapitulate and the size 25 high flex and that's the first uh, canal all nicely shaped now when we look at the canal orifice here we can see that it's kind of off center isn't it it's not quite um, right down the middle of the tooth and that's kind of an indication maybe there might be a second uh, uh, canal here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use an ultrasonic tip just to try and open up or try and find this canal and the great thing about these ultrasonic tips is they're quite high energy and sometimes if the orifice is just kind of bobbing down the surface we can try to maybe open up the orifice here and it, it looks like I have um, opened up an orifice because it looked kind of like dark like the uh, like the like like the other canal and and this is the kind of situation where I'm gonna think well maybe because the uh, high energy ultrasonic tip has has, um, has, has found this kind of divot inside the, the, the cavity I'm gonna open this up further with ultrasonic tips 
And now I'm going to use a very, very, very thin ultrasonic tip that isn't diamond tip. So it's like a kind of a needle. And this is just going to have a little bit of a negotiation around this sort of possible um, space where this canal is. And, um, and like I say, we're just going to open it up a little bit. We're going to use paper points to try and dry uh, the cavity. And then as I uh, use this needle tipped ultrasonic tip, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. I'm using it very very carefully. I kind of get that kind of um, uh, feeling that oh there's a little bit of liquid there and that's blood. And um, at this moment, I don't know if that's opening up the canal or that is a, a genuine perforation. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna irrigate and there's there's a bit of blood there. Possible that that that's just just a just a sort of vital canal. Um, but, I, but I, what I do need to do is just get an apex locator on that and just, just to see if it is a perforation or not. And what you'll find that is um, when you put the apex locator onto the, uh, the, 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 the perforation, it will, it will scream zero straight away. It won't. Um, it won't kind of sort of be halfway. It'll just show zero straight away, knowing that you're touching the PDL immediately in that uh uh, situation. So what are we going to do here is we're going to so we're going to we're going to try and repair this um, this 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 opening that that I, that I've created here, and it's only a tiny tiny opening. Again, it's really really important that you don't um, sort of. Uh, it sounds blindly obvious, but if you feel like you've perforated a tooth, do not get a file down there and try and sort of clean it all out because the the, the larger the, the the perforation is, the the harder it is to uh, to, to repair, and obviously that uh, it comes into um, you know the prognosis of the tooth. So we're going to use a bioceramic here, and, and um, this bioceramic is a putty. You can use you know. Uh, um, uh, by dentin in this case we're using well root i like well root because it's quite um it's quite easy to use and it's easy to sort of get uh, sort of bring into a little putty and i'm just using this uh, putty former here to create the plug and i'm just going to pull it um through this instrument here so it creates like kind of a like a cylindrical plug and then the great thing about this is i can get a mac 2 plugger and i can sort of capture it by opening up this uh, this this instrument and this kind of places like a little plug on the end of the Mac 2 plugger and I'm going to very 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 gently uh, push this into the perforation spot now it doesn't have to be neat okay because um, once you've placed this plug you're going to tidy it up a little bit but what's important is that you have enough of the bioceramic in place so what you don't want is a very very small thin layer of bioceramic like a millimeter you want a significant amount and what i like to do is I like to use these uh, paper points to kind of dab the bioceramic down the putty down into the canal and it also kind of picks up any excess obviously you don't want a huge amount of bioceramic down there because then it just gets really difficult to do the to complete the root canal but using these paper points it's a really really useful uh thing to use the only downside of the paper point is it is it captures all the moisture and what you need to remember is the bioceramic relies on moisture for it to set so what i don't want you to do is just over dry this too much at this point, I'm thinking to myself, well, I want to take a CBCT because, um, you know, I don't want to perforate a second time. So I'm going to dress this tooth with, with non-setting calcium hydroxide. And I'm, I am injecting this directly into the canal. And you want to be really, really careful doing that if you're not using a scope. And then I'm just using a PTFE or Teflon tape, just to pack it. And then I'm using uh, like, a, like a normal GI just to, just to, um, just to close this, this tooth up. And I suppose you could argue, you know, why why didn't I take the um, the CBCT um, straight away? Um, you know, it, I suppose in hindsight, it probably would have been a really really good idea to uh, to take a CBCT straight away. But remember, hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, you know, you could argue that if you just took a CBCT with every single case, because. Um, you know, just to be sure that um, you know, you know, you, you you could you could sort of find all these aberrant canals and things, but we we know that taking a CBCT for every single case is is, is excessive. 
Um, but in this case, um, I suppose in a way, when we look at the CBC TV's sectional images here, we can sort of, if we sort of hone in on the um, the sort of the when you're looking at CBCT, it looks like it's it's back to front, but you are looking upwards into the tooth, so you're not looking downwards. So when I'm doing the root canal, I'm looking downwards into the tooth. So that very large white spot there, that is the mesobuccal canal. Okay, but it looks like it's on the other side, um, on 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 you know on the on the video uh, footage here, and also you can see a very very smaller white dot where the bisomic. Um, uh, perf uh, perforation repair is so what I'm trying to do here is I am trying to kind of look um, I'm gonna try and move my sort of uh, investigation instruments up into um, uh, this this kind of sort of area where this obvious open other canal is so what we've done is we've um, we've got the patient back in for a second appointment okay for perforate the tooth um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure the bioceramic had set before we carried on and it was coming to the end of the appointment anyway So that was a that was that was sort of good timing and what I'm doing here is I'm just removing the temp very very carefully not to um, Pull out the repair while I'm doing that and we just want to assess it and and it looks looks really nice nice and clean um, lots and lots of bioceramic in there and I'm very very happy with that repair so these are the great things about when you're using um, CBCT images is that you can kind of look in the mouth and then look at the CBCT at the same time. And we can see the buccal canal here. We can see the perforation repair. And what I'm using now is I'm using like a um, an ultrasonic tip to kind of shift my um, my 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 investigation further palatally and measly towards this canal and and almost instantly you know I use the ultrasonic that I'm into the ultrasonic tip um, uh, for a tiny tiny little bit and then I find the canal straight away and I'll tell you now you know every single time I've perforated it's 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 always been found straight away once I know where I'm kind of going and um, but it is bleeding and you know I'm thinking stuff is this another perforation and we're gonna do that apex locator test again where we're gonna place the, um, the, the the file into the canal and what we find is that it doesn't scream zero straight away so we know we're in that canal and essentially it's just the same shaping protocol okay um, again if you've seen a lot of my videos um, I like to use a size 10 uh, gain a working length and use a glide path file just to open up the canal space and then if it's appropriate I'll use a size 25 variable high flex or sometimes if it's very highly calcified or very very bent uh, in the canal um, I'm going to use a size 20 and now we're going to go for the comfort radiograph and um, as you can see here I did feel like the palatal canal was quite uh, narrow so I did finish on a size 20 in this case but with the buckle I, I finished on a size 25 you know don't be scared to mix things up the the, the, the canals don't have to be the same um, apical diameter you know it's shaping and we look at the comfort radiograph here and it looks really really nice and and that second uh, canal or root it looks really really obvious now but before prior it didn't look so obvious and now we're just going to finish off the tooth um, we're going to do the final irrigation protocol we're going to use sodium hypochlorite and um, we're going to uh, ultrasonically activate the tooth and then we're going to use some EDTA and then ultrasonically activate that and then we're just going to dry the canals with, with, with these paper points making sure the canal is completely dry before you obturate and then we're going to finally obturate the tooth with uh, my bioceramic sealer. And you can see here we're going to use a visco tip. So these tips are absolutely great. They're, they've got like a sort of a metal um, tube on them that keeps it rigid. And then the final sort of end of the tooth is kind of like a sleeve. And you can kind of fit that down uh, the root canal quite easily and, and directly inject the bioceramic into the, the canal space. And um, it's the same though, the same risk with the calcium hydroxide about injecting directly into the canal. If you haven't got a really, really good magnification, you know, at the very least a microscope, um, you, you are risking a significant extrusion here. So you have to be really, really careful using the visco tips if you haven't got high magnification. Um, and you know just using the heated plugger as long as you're using the heated plugger um, just at the tip and you're not pushing the bioceramic down 
and with the heater plug out that that's absolutely fine and in fact you know um i think it's probably the most efficient way of just removing excess gp and then we're going to use uh, again same protocol with the buckle uh, canal using these visco tips just to inject about um uh, the third of the canal is filled with um with with this bias ceramic i'm using one fill by the way and then i am going to very 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 slowly gently push the obturation the gp point to length what i don't want to do is push it really quickly to length because um sometimes you get this vapor lock and sometimes you um you 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 can bend or you can sort of extrude G, um, the sealer out the end so that's what we don't want to do and then you know same again with heated plugger i like to take uh, um, the excess of gp away and then i'm going to use these mach 2 pluggers to push down quite firmly again if you've seen a lot of my um, videos, I like to push down and make sure the GP is really, really well compacted down there. I used to be a little bit, a little bit like a little bit fairy pushing the GP divan down, but now I really, really ram it home. Okay, and um, I'm just gonna uh, just just clean up the excess sealer with with water and kind of assess what the sort of the sort of coronal GP look looks like, and it looks a bit of a mess. So what I am going to do is I'm just going to use a heated plugger here. This is on speed just to um, sort of tidy up um, the inside of the cavity. And the, the, the reason why you do this is because you want to seal this up. Okay. And if it all looks like a bit of a mess, it's not going to seal very well. And then we look at the post op and it looks, looks beautiful. It always looks beautiful, doesn't it? You know, we've got... Um, the, 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 the obturation is to length. You can kind of see the perforation repair there. Um, but, you know, this is a really, really nice result. And the patient was lovely, really nice lady. And, you know, we just explained the situation. She was really, really happy. I suppose if I had any tips about perforations, is obviously you tr want to try and um, uh, uh, avoid them at all costs, okay? But I'll give you two tips. One is try not to get too upset about it if it happens, okay? Try and keep you cool. It's best for the patient. It's best for your mental health. And just take your time, you know. A lot of these perforations that do occur in the coronal uh, third are really genuinely repairable, quite easily repairable. And if you think to yourself, well, I, I can't repair these, well, they're easily repairable by somebody else, okay? It's not the end of the world if it happens. Um, my second tip on perforations is, you know, I'm very, very thorough when it comes to uh, the consultation process. So um, in the consultation process, um, I always uh, give the patient the risk of a perforation. Even if I look at the tooth and I think it's probably not going to perforate. I'll tell you now, they're the ones that you perforate, that you're not expecting to perforate. So it's always good to sort of let the patient know beforehand that it might happen because nobody's perfect and don't forget you know these most of these teeth are in really really bad state so um you know you, you're already um trying to treat compromised teeth already so you need to sort of manage patients expectations let them know that um, these things can happen and when they do happen it isn't a nasty surprise and you're not going to get that nasty kind of complaint um in the, with the practice manager and um i, I would say all the perforations that I have caused in the past 